I'm not surprised, number one, that the measure was uh, defeated because it was fundamentally flawed. And I'm not surprised that the market dropped uh, 7 percent um, because many people were counting upon this to uh, partially revive uh, the crisis. My opinion was that even if it passed today, the market probably would have gone up. But then as people slowly began to realize the structural problems within this uh, troubled asset uh, bill, uh, the market would have eventually dropped. Basically, we got everything very quickly. Let me pitch the, the most basic flaw. And it's important to understand basically how banking works here. So you go into a bank and you make a deposit, let's say it's $100. Uh, the bank has got to put, let's say, $5 on reserve with the Federal Reserve, and it takes the other $95 and invests it. And suppose they invest in subprime mortgages with that 95. And all of a sudden, that asset goes bad and the 95 is now worth $10. So you're in a situation where the bank has got a great pr promised rate of return of 11%, let's say, on the subprime mortgage. They've only got to pay you 1% on your $100 deposit, but you've got the problem that the subprime's worth only $10 now, and they owe you 100. That's how these banks got into trouble. They invested in high-risk assets, and now they're paying the price. Well, it's obvious what's not uh, doable and that is for um, the Treasury or the government to go in and purchase some of these troubled assets. In my example, something worth 10 cents. They want to go in and pay uh, 95. So I, I think that one of the main problems uh, of the proposal was to pay what's known as hold to maturity prices for these troubled assets. And I think that really sat poorly with the American people. Why should uh, you overpay uh, for, for these assets. It didn't make sense.